What's up, Sushi Squad? We back in some more troll. Drove. How y'all doing today, folks? Hope you're doing fantastic, wonderful. Today we got Luxie in here in the hub. We're gonna talk about his inventory. Uh, talk a little bit about the Easter event, and most importantly of all, we've got a huge announcement that's happening with Trove. Uh, that I'll probably end up talking about a little bit later in the video after we end up getting uh, to deal with Luxian. I'll probably end up mentioning it a few times in some other streams and stuff like that as well. But needless to say, we got some big, big news about Trove, and it's looking pretty darn positive. Now, before we end up getting started with today's video, I gotta let you guys know, if you're new to Trove, I would appreciate if you use that sign-up link in the description. All it's gonna do is make it so that if you end up buying anything in the cash shop in the future, I'll make a percentage of that sale. It's an awesome way you can support me, and thank you so much if you do so. Now, another thing too is uh, uh, with the Easter stuff, look at this. So you know that mod that I talked about in my Easter video mentioning how or Bunfest video mentioning how it made the eggs bigger? I didn't know that I did this to the hub. It actually looks better. <laughs> like I I think so anyways. I mean obviously a lot of it looks kind of broken and stuff, but I think it looks great actually. Like I like it. Um the other thing too is here's one of the mag riders that you can end up getting from the eggs. Uh there is also, I think on the pirate captain I put one of the mounts. So, in fact, yes, you do end up getting the Easter mounts and junk like that on uh, the Mag Rider. You get them from wandering out in the world and destroying the eggs, as well as just from the egg dungeons. Uh, another thing, too, that I forgot to mention in my uh, Bunfest video is that if you go to the donation station, you can actually continuously donate Bunfest chocolate, and then you'll end up having a small percentage chance, but you can end up getting more Bunfest tokens. So it kind of is a way that you can avoid the time-gated nature of these three idiots. I, I just thought that it was important enough to end up mentioning. So with that all out of the way, we got Luxian chilling in the hub. He's down here with a bunch of eggs around him, and his inventory looks kind of bad. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, too, that I completely forgot to mention because it was April Fool's Day, right? We had Slow Sebastian, the mount called Slow Sebastian in the game, actually acted like Gonda. I wish I would have known about that in time that I could have let you guys know about it because it was pretty hilarious to see a, a bunch of people with Slow Sebastian running through the sky with a golden trail behind them. Like, it was it was pretty, pretty pog. Uh, so anyways, let's actually swap over to the night and take a peek at some of these. So we got the Meatloaf, which... This is a specific item that you get out of Luxian. It's disgusting. Seriously. Not only is it a worm mount, but you'll see that it actually has like it's got blood trails coming out of it, dude. Like this is disgusting. It and it doesn't look like like I don't know what kind of meatloaf the developers are eating, but this looks raw, dude. Like that <laughs> No. Just no. So anyways, you can get that if you really want. I don't think there's a reason to end up getting this or trying to sell it to people. There's the Bitten Kitten, which is an old event item. The funny thing is that a lot of the items that Luxie is selling right now, these are kind of like uh, when the developers were lazy and just had like one or two different colors on these mounts. That's why they look so plain. Uh, whereas now, you know, more recently when things get added to the game, like this egg mount right here that you see he's walking around with, it actually has like some proper shading and some proper coloring and stuff and is really, really nice. This actually looks super duper appropriate with this disgusting night bonnet costume. Kind of, kind of looks cute. So the baby Dilo, oh my God, this is probably one of the worst, excuse me? There we go. Why? Oh, baby, and then apostrophe Dilo. Okay, that's weird that it doesn't have it right there. So anyway, this is an Arluxian item. Uh, I would hope that this is really, really expensive. No, it's not. Just because it's the worst mount in the entire game, or at least one of. Like, look at this thing, dude. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Like, this is so lazy. I do like how it wiggles for help just because it's not a baby Dilo. It's an overweight Dilo. Like, this thing looks absolutely atrocious, but I kind of like it just the same. Uh, so then we got Sebastian, which, uh, again, Slow Sebastian was the one that had gone to trails. I don't think it still does, does it? Oh, I guess we can't tell when we're in the hub anyways. Uh, but Sebastian's going to literally be the same version of this guy, but it's actually fast yeah so uh yeah uh, i i like sebastian i have a lot of nostalgia for it because it's one of the first mounts in the game um the funny thing is that they had sebastian and then they had a different version of it and those were both in the cash shop you could buy them for cubits but they were still uh, a super old school item which was really cool and interesting so then there's the uh shadow shrike 
so this is actually an emblem summons a temporary damage dealing ally to deal uh, or to fight for you this ally deals based on your uh, deals damage based on your physical attack so this is actually a pretty good one not the best but it's it's not bad so let me actually just consume a flash you can see it's literally just a shadow chicken kind of the same ones that the uh boomeranger ends up having you can only have one of these allies out at a time they end up having pretty decent scale damage though i mean it's it's not like it's not worth it right or is it not worth it no it's not worth it they're not selling for worth anything uh so then we got luxian style stash you can buy five of these so luxian style stash is only for mastery farmers they're absolutely useless they will unlock a random seasonal event pinata or luxian equipment style so that's going to be all the stuff in this section which you can see give one mastery each so don't get these they're too expensive uh and then he's also selling five empowered gem boxes for 30 dragon coins each <sighs> oh oh my god what just happened i went blind for a second that's disgusting dude like i can't even oh my god that's so overpriced dude yikes so anyways last but not least we got the golden horde dragon soul so you can buy these 15 times uh and then you have to wait until luxian visits in another two weeks and then you can buy them again but we can actually see that there is a crap ton of mastery that you get out of consuming these souls you get like a bunch of different mounts a bunch of different allies and stuff out of it as well uh and then of course last but not least we get the full-on dragon itself which it, you know he's pretty cool i i, I kind of like him he's at least better than corexian like corexian's an idiot uh this is the fully maxed out one though uh it's gonna land you about like 400 dragon coins total in order to craft uh enough uh souls that you can end up consuming to get the full dragon oh god we can just hide in the egg <laughs> i get it because it's a modded egg where now i'm standing on it now i'm not it's it's literally just a tiny little thing right there but it's upscaled just because of the mod it's interesting so yeah anyways that's gonna be doing it for luxian's inventory now to the important news that i gotta let you guys know about uh, i might end up having a separate video talking about this we'll see what the heck is this that's supposed to be an egg i kind of like it as a tree anyways trove has actually been secretly confirmed to come for the nintendo switch yep that's right that's actually really really cool lots of people have been talking about it for a long long time people have been wanting trove on nintendo switch i personally think that trove will do great on nintendo switch the idea of this type of game being on the switch and being portable is crazy because despite the fact that trove definitely has a lot of shortcomings and you know a lot of us at this point in the game are very critical of what trove is i still believe that there's nothing else like it there's no other voxel mmo out there that is even close to something like this and that's kind of the other uh, reason why so many players myself included get frustrated because trove is like so close to greatness because it's already unique it's just kind of missing that good core gameplay loop that everybody wants and the end game is just kind of ass and wh whatever but the point is that i think this would be great on the switch because it would be on the go uh the switch is the closest that trove will get to being a mobile game and i think that trove actually very very much fits a mobile game uh in terms of its microtransactions like they're just everywhere and you're constantly buying like vanity stuff and everything uh, either way i'm excited the problems that they face is obviously dealing with frame rate issues and dealing with the lag. Hopefully those will both end up being rectified because the problem is that the Nintendo Switch, save for if you have a specific accessory, uh, will not have an internet cable plugged into it. So it's strictly Wi-Fi. I mean, I'm guessing a lot of you guys that are playing, uh, you know, playing Trove on uh, console or even laptops more specifically, some of you guys are playing on Wi-Fi, and I'm sure it's not that bad so long as you have a powerful enough internet. But I, I get excited at the idea that Trove could end up being played out on the go, you know, because you could use your phone as a mobile hotspot, and then you could just play Trove in the park. I don't know why you would ever want to, but I just get excited at the idea, and I still really really think that trove on switch would end up doing very well just because it's free to play there's not really anything else like it and blah 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 now to to weigh your expectations down a little bit because i know some of you are probably getting ahead of yourself saying like well can i convert all of my stuff over to it no probably not uh it's more than likely going to be a brand new server 
So everything's going to be starting from scratch, which does mean that a lot of the existing exploitation, most notably in the PC version and some in console as well, because there is flux duplication, uh, you know, in the game. There's lots of people that have done a bunch of scummy things over the years and taken advantage of exploits and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the, all of that should hopefully be resolved uh, by now, I would assume. Uh, I think all the bugs are fixed, but sometimes they put out a patch that breaks it. My point is that the Switch shouldn't deal with any of that. It should be absolutely fresh. So the player market's gonna be fresh and not stupid. Everything's probably gonna be super overpriced at first and then slowly come down, but I, I, I don't know. I just get really excited at the idea of playing it on the Switch. So I wanted to have a segment announcing it and talking about it uh, just in today's video, just because I don't know if I'll have time to record another video today, but I will have other videos that will talk about these details, uh, well, in a little bit more detail. But basically, the funny thing is, what ended up happening is the guys over at Trovesaurus, these ballers, ended up uh, looking into, their, there was some type of game ago thing where one of the CEOs was talking to their investors or something about what their plans were for a lot of these games and a lot of the projects. And they ended up talking about how Trove was going to end up coming to Nintendo Switch this year, by the way, not next year or the year after that. So that's really cool and exciting. Uh, now, the other thing, too, that I wanted to mention is that with Trove coming on the Nintendo Switch, it means that a lot of us that have been worried about it can breathe easy. Trove's not going anywhere anytime soon. Because one of the biggest things that so many of us were so worried about was since Game Ago has been closing a lot of other games that Tryon Worlds ended up owning, uh, we ended up getting really worried, well, what was going to happen with Trove's future? Now, there is a high probability that one day trove servers are just gonna come offline and there's nothing we can do about it and we might not even have like a trove sequel by that point it depends whether game ago sees the uh worth in investing in another continued project but at the least they see that it's worth it to bring trove to nintendo switch so it means that they must at least be getting enough of a profit off of this game that they're not just going to shut the servers down so that is probably the most exciting bit of news to take from all of this but anyways i don't mean to ramble thanks for watching gamers smash like sub for more buy the merch you want to support the channel and have a fantastic day sayonara and stay epic everybody